Welcome to this module on mobile health and patient engagement. Consumer informatics is a new term that describes the use of technology and information to encourage individuals to maintain their own health. This movement has given rise to the e-patient, someone who uses technology to actively participate in his or her own health care. These clients usually seek information, share knowledge, and connect with others digitally. The term e-health came about in 1999 and means the use of emerging information and communication technology, especially the internet, to improve health and health care. The term can be used for the exchange of information from health professional to health professional, from consumer to consumer, or from health professional to consumer. It has spawned such terms as participatory medicine, participatory healthcare, patient-generated health data, health 3.0, virtual patient communities and research networks, and mobile apps. One of the major developments in this area is the personal health record. Although many people kept their health information on paper for years, this movement got a major push from the meaningful use requirement in 2014 that patients who visit a certified healthcare provider must be able to access their EHR data. The healthcare organization had to show that at least 5% of their patients use this function in order to receive funds. A national survey found that most patients wanted an electronic personal health record that could help with refilling prescriptions, communicating with their doctor, obtaining results from recent lab and radiology reports, and scheduling appointments. More recently, patients have expressed a desire for a system in which they could upload their self-monitoring data, such as heart rate, blood pressures, blood glucose readings to their providers. Currently, there are some standalone personal health information systems that can be stored on a computer or a USB device. However, the most common version is a tethered personal health record that is linked to a single clinic or a healthcare system. Another major benefit of an electronic personal health record is the ability to download a client's data and take it to a different provider. The idea for the blue button was envisioned in 2010 and developed by CMS, the Department of Defense, and the Department of Veteran Affairs. In 2012, ONC sponsored challenges to increase awareness of the blue button and to increase the use of this data to communicate across multiple providers who have different information systems. It is also a requirement of stage two meaningful use requirements to allow patients to have the capability to view, download, and transmit their health data electronically. Although interoperability is a future goal, downloading and sharing data is a good first step. Social media has spawned some of the most interesting uses of technology for health. Social media is changing how groups and individuals acquire and disperse information, communicate with others, and connect to those with similar interests. Thus, it is used to increase awareness of healthcare services, give out health promotion and preventative education, and connect patients to others with similar experiences. One example of a non-for-profit site is CaringBridge. This site allows invited friends to support a friend or family member in a healthcare crisis. An example of a for-profit site is Patients Like Me, which was started by two brothers to connect with other individuals who had a disease that was affecting their third brother. Recently, major healthcare systems like the VA, Mayo Clinic and insurance companies are using social media to promote well-being and to provide answers to basic health questions. Social media is full of benefits and challenges. 
On one hand, sites like Patients Like Me have been studied to examine the incidence and prevalence of side effects of treatments and their symptom management. There is also some qualitative research being done with the support provided by sharing one's story and receiving advice from similar type patients. On the other hand, there are some challenges with social media. The first is inaccurate advice passed on from one consumer to another. This could potentially delay someone from seeking face-to-face -face medical care. Another is the potential for unhealthy relationships or violations of privacy. Security breaches are also possible and some participants could use social media to gain information that could be used against someone. As a healthcare provider, you may have your own positive and negative stories concerning social media. The last topic is mobile applications, or mHealth. This topic is very broad and covers short message texting on specific topics such as smoking sensation or pregnancy or built-in activity trackers that record food intake and physical activity to support a healthcare goal. It can also include real-time reporting of blood glucose readings or uploading daily health measurements to a provider's office. In addition to the mobile applications or apps for consumers, there are many apps for professionals that provide decision support when providing care for patients. Some of the challenges are patient misinterpretation of data that they collect and data privacy risks when uploading to a provider. Some apps are costly and therefore providers should be able to evaluate the apps before recommending them to another professional or to their clients. These mobile apps are here to stay and there is unlimited creativity for designing more apps.